Here's the brief news from the world over this week. On Thursday, President Donald Trump declared the opioid crisis a nationwide public health emergency. Under the Public Health Service Act, Trump will be able to direct the Department of Health and Human Services to expand medical services to areas hardest hit by America's latest epidemic. It also eases some federal regulations, giving states more latitude to address the problem locally. This epidemic is a national health emergency. Unlike many of us, we've seen, and what we've seen in our lifetimes, Nobody has seen anything like what's going on now. As Americans, we cannot allow this to continue. It is time to liberate our communities from this scourge of drug addiction. Never been this way. We can be the generation that ends the opioid epidemic. We can do it. Opioid deaths have been on the rise since 1999. In 2016, a record 64,000 opioid-related deaths occurred in the United States. This week marks the 50th anniversary of legalized abortion in the United Kingdom. The Abortion Act of 1967 made abortion legal in England, Wales, and Scotland, up to 28 weeks of pregnancy. In 1990, the law was amended. To up to 24 weeks of pregnancy. During the last 50 years, nearly 9 million abortions have occurred. The Catholic bishops of England and Wales and Scotland issued a joint statement reflecting on the anniversary. They said it's a moment to lament the loss of life and an opportunity to seek a change of minds and hearts about the good of the child in the womb and the care of mothers who are pregnant." End quote. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court of the U.K. heard arguments this week to expand Northern Ireland's abortion laws. Currently, abortions are only permitted if the mother's life is in danger. The Northern Ireland Human Rights Commission, which is spearheading the lawsuit, says that's a violation of the human rights of women and girls, that exceptions are not made to allow abortion in cases of rape, incest, or serious birth defects. And the numbers are in for Canada's first full year of legal assisted suicide. According to the government, 1,982 Canadians ended their lives between June of 2016 and June of 2017, increasing by 50 percent in the second half of the year. Canadian suicides accounted for almost 1 percent of all deaths, tripling the suicide rate in Oregon. Missing from the report was information on how many people seeking assisted suicide were turned down. Apart from Canada, euthanasia is legal in the Netherlands, Belgium, Colombia, and Luxembourg. And back here in the U.S., on Monday, President Donald Trump awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor to Army Captain Gary Michael Rose of Alabama. The retired Army medic received the highest military honor for gallantry during the Vietnam War. The now 70-year-old Rose, who is Catholic and an active member of the Knights of Columbus, was part of the highly classified 5th Special Forces Group. On a mission in Laos in September of 1970, the company was attacked by the North Vietnamese Army. Already wounded from the previous day's battle, Rose maneuvered his way some 50 meters to a wounded soldier, shielded the soldier with his own body as he rendered life-saving treatment. When he returned to base camp, he was hit by the shrapnel of a grenade, crippling his foot. As the only medic on the unit, he remained on the mission and in battle to its end, using a stick as a crutch. Captain Rose remembered those who served in Vietnam unheralded in its countless covert missions. In honor of all those individuals that went for so many years where the military didn't even recognize the fact that Max Sog even existed, and all those men who fought in that time frame. This kind of brings it home. And now their story is being told. And now with this award, I am convinced that they have been recognized for the great service they did to this country. Captain Rose was joined by his wife, Margaret, children and grandchildren, fellow veterans, and even 10 members of his own unit. Those are the stories we need to hear more of. 
While Pope Francis struggles to make good on his zero tolerance pledge to fight clerical sex abuse worldwide, victims in his native Argentina are denouncing the abuses in record numbers. According to a new comprehensive analysis by the Associated Press, a list of 66 priests, nuns, and brothers have been accused since 2001 of abusing dozens of people, most of them children. In several cases, the victim's disclosure was not followed by a canonical or judicial review. Some of the accused remained in ministry. A few have been convicted and sent to jail. Victims' advocates are now questioning how much of the alleged abuse Pope Francis might have known when he was Archbishop of Buenos Aires. He was Argentina's top church official from 1998 until he was elected pope in 2013. There are no official numbers on clerical abuse published by Argentina's church or government, but in light of the recent alleged abuse, the church is planning reform measures, including the first comprehensive database of clerical abuse there. Meanwhile, the U.S. bishops have issued the first English language translation of the Rite of Exorcism. Exorcisms and Related Supplications was released this week by the Bishops' Conference in the U.S. Access to it is strictly limited, however. It is available only to exorcists, clergy, and seminary professors with the permission of their bishop. The translation is taken from the revised rite originally promulgated in Latin in 1999 and slightly amended in 2004. Father Andrew Menke, executive director of the U.S. Bishop's Secretariat for Divine Worship, says having the rite available in the vernacular means the priest can concentrate on the ritual prayers without, quote, needing to worry about working in another language, end quote. And finally, without her, there might have been no EWTN. Jean Morris, beloved friend, confidant, and early supporter of Mother Angelica, passed away this week at the age of 93. Jean was born in Dallas, Texas, but grew up in New Orleans. Jean was instrumental in getting Mother Angelica's television career off the ground in Birmingham. She was a member of an Episcopal women's Bible group that first invited Mother to lead them in a Lenten Bible study. And from those meetings grew Mother Angelica's teaching mission, her recording ministry, and later Jean personally financed Mother's fledgling broadcast efforts and supported her religious communities. She was a true friend to Mother Angelica and the network to the very end of her life and a dear lady. Our thoughts and prayers go out to her family and friends. May Jean Morris rest in peace. Thank you.